So anyway, it goes on to say here, um, here here's a guy wrote an article called the, the Bliss Point. You see, these guys, some of them are psychologists, some of them are scientists. So it says here, the, 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 so bread has added sugar to make it more blissful, right? All of these things, the advertisements, all of these cookies, desserts, they make everything. 59 varieties of sweetness are put in them. They have these psychologists and, and uh, scientists stay, stay there all day trying to figure all of this out. Okay, and then they say here, um, they, um, they just sugar, salt, sugar, and fat they put in the foods. Uh, okay, so, oh, okay, so let's get to, you know, look, that's enough of that. I usually don't do that because uh, it's all about being positive here. And hey, look, it's all about, you know, enjoying life. And that's what we were meant to be. Look, anybody, if you're depressed now or upset through these steps in this program and when you're, you're spiritually fit, life is it's just this. You know how we know that? Because when ch you see children, when we were children, they're just happy in the present. The past, we're always thinking about the past or planning the past. They always say planning it. And the future, we're, we're, it's all anxiety. We're regretting the future. Ever hear that? Regretting the future or planning the past. That's our lives. But we want to be an eternal present. You know, I talk more about a lot of spirituality at a lot of meetings. But here, so here, look. Here's like some quotes. For example, here's a quote. You know, some of these are from scriptures or just quotes that I... That I, that I have here. But what it's talking about here, it doesn't say, hey, it doesn't say here, like, okay, what you have to do is have these little morsels of food and we're going to make them for you and send them to you and just have the three meals a day and then weigh yourself, weigh your food and then only have this and do this and do that and, and, and you know, make sure you do it and do it that way and that's going to resolve the problem. Never works, never works. But here is the, here, I'm going to read from here and then also the big book. So if you want to know the solution, here it is. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? So when you think of your body, right? This beautiful body is God's temple, right? We always hear the reference to that. When you have that perception, when you look at that, you don't try to resist the, the, uh, the problem you have, you know, with any problem in life. But when you get centered, we have prayer meditation. When, we, when I get centered, the answer is, the answers come to me. So, if I'm sitting down and I have all these big plates of food and all these high calorie, calorie things and, and I try to resist it. No, I can't do it that way. I can't. The things we resist the most become most prominent in our mind. And we think about the most. We obsess about the most. So the only way out of this problem is to have that perception change that, you know, so it talks about here. So about our body being God's temple, new design for living, understanding that, um, it, it talks about make, not making food a higher power, not making our addictions, not making people a higher power. So it says here, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, the body more important than clothes? So here we're talking about material things. So what happens is, with our addictions to the drugs, the food, alcohol, and people, you know, when we get sent, and I use this example too, hey, look, you know, you go somewhere, say you go to a meeting and you want to be, you know, uh, want people there to like you, you know, and, and then you figure, oh, some of these people here don't like me, or you see somebody go to a meeting, they're very popular, and, and the people there usually like them, then he finds the one person because his whole basis is on people liking him, then he's upset because this person didn't like him. So look, here's the story here. Go to a meeting or go wherever you're going to go and think you're the worst person in the world. Nobody wants to talk to you. But you could go there and sit down and be happy and free. This is the whole thing here with life. So the same with addiction to food. We don't need that food, that making that higher power, coming home, closing the shades, and, and just sitting here. When we get centered, we pray and meditate. The joy and happiness, that's why I call it spiritual bread. You know, this weight loss diet plan is a spiritual one. And it's on the spiritual bread. You're not going to gain any weight. Let me tell you that. What's going to happen is you're going to have that revolutionary transformation. Because you know what? I'm going to read. And then these quotes go on talking about how we can be uh, understanding. And, 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 you know, hey, why in um, major religions do they fast? Why do they fast? Right? What's the story behind that? Of course, the food, the money, success, these are all material things bring us away from our joy. And the more we get of food, the more we get of money, the further it takes us away from our scent and the more miserable we are. On the other side, it's called pleasure. You know, that's pleasure. And I always use it. I'm going to, again, the example of a man who climbs Mount Everest, he goes through his whole life and he finally saves up all his money. He gets frostbite and finally gets to the top of the mountain on Mount Everest. And guess what? 
He's, he's happy for a moment. That's momentary pleasure. On the way home, he has an argument with the taxi cab driver and home maybe with his wife too. So here's a story. And then when he's home, he's miserable because he's thinking about a million other ways. He's got to climb, reclimb Mount Everest because people do it more than once or there's seven other mountaintops. So anyway, and when I heard that story, and I tell you, the guy, it was at a meditation center and the guy, they had a real deal. He had the robes and everything. And he was sitting there and he said, he goes, I could sit on my couch and be just as happy. So here's a connection through these steps in this process. You can be just as happy because you're going to be enjoying spirituality, enjoying the, the, the universe and the energy and, and people and nature. Hey, when I drive in my car and I'm going along eating, I'm not enjoying anything. When I'm home, like I say, you know, binge eating or, or uh, you know, obsessively being a compulsive overeater, whatever it is, or taking drugs or using to drink alcohol right all day, right? It never ends. But we have a better way. And the way is, I'm going to do it now because I, I don't know how much time we have left. But let me get to the right to the, uh, the answer now. In this book, and again, I don't know why they do, but they call the chapter There is a Solution. If you go to page 25, and it says, There is a solution. You see it in italics on page 25 in the big book? Almost none of us like the self-searching, the leveling of our pride, the confession of shortcomings, right? It all has to do with the ego, easing God out. Pride. Pride is one of the seven deadly sins. They say pride before the fall, right? But we saw that it really worked in others. That spiritual transformation, it's the answer, and it says in this book, in Bill's story, the answer to all our problems. It says here, where there, okay, we had become to believe in the hopelessness and futility of life as we had been living it. So all of a sudden, you know, my spiritual awakening was when I realized where the problem was. When I realized the problem was me and my thinking, and when my perception changes, the world changes around me. Also, when you surrender, the world, the world surrenders to you also. We stop fighting, it says on the nine step promises, 10 step promises, we stop fighting anyone or anything. For by this point, we're going to reach a point of neutrality. We don't even swear off. We try to swear off, we try to control anything, it doesn't work. The human will can't resolve an issue. This is a spiritual solution. And it says in this book many, many times, and we're going to read about that too. And he goes on to say, the problem had been solved. So what does that mean, the problem had been solved? There was nothing left for us to do. This is, there, when, we, when I came in here, most of us here, we hit bottom. There's nothing left for us to do. We should be grateful we're here because we hit bottom. Other people, hey, look, people who do very well, when they do well success, they do well monetarily. That, that, they're the most difficult ones, as it says. The ones, the rich man is, and woman is the hardest one to, to, to reach the kingdom, you know, to feel great and that joy is kingdom within us and that the joy and the happiness because they're pursuing, their joy comes from these material things, never enough. In the state, you know what? Pleasure in these material things keep people in a state of being neurotic. That's <laughs> Neurotic, like rats going along, trying to, trying to get more and more, more food, more alcohol, more drugs, more people like you, more success, more money. So why do people, billionaires on a yacht, kill themselves? Because the answer isn't there. Why do billions of people believe in religion and these philosophical things and spirituality? But you know, the problem was we lived in a crazy country. Everything's about the material things. It's all about materialism. It's about if, when you're in school, if you did better in grades, if you did better in sports, if you were the in crowd, same with every, so that's the way we run our lives. You know, so there is a solution here, a spiritual solution. 